All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the very basics of matrices. And we're gonna do this because it's gonna help us solve systems of differential equations. So let's start off with a little bit of vocabulary. So each one of these is considered to be a matrix, and every matrix has dimensions. This here is a two by two matrix, and this here is a two by two matrix as well. C is a three by two matrix, so now you'll realize that we write the number of rows as the first number and the number of columns as the second number. And D here is a two by one matrix. And whenever a matrix only has one column, I'll refer to that in class as a vector. I denote my vectors with a little arrow on top of typically a lowercase letter. In your book, uh, matrices and vectors will be denoted with bold letters. Of course, I can't do that, so I'll typically just use uh, uppercase letters and arrows for vectors. So there are a whole lot of things that we can do with matrices. The first one being uh, addition and subtraction of matrices. So we can add matrix A plus matrix B. And if you've never learned anything about matrix algebra before, the way you add A and B is probably what you would think. You take each element in matrix A and add it to the same element in matrix B. So we're going to get 5, negative 1, 5, and 6. And there I went using a vocabulary word. Uh, each number inside of a matrix is called an element. This element right here would be called element 3, 1. And it's typically denoted with a lowercase letter and the two numbers as a subscript. Just in case there's any confusion, this element negative 3 in this matrix over here would be denoted as lowercase c, 2, 2. Okay, so addition and subtraction is pretty straightforward. One note is that you can't do things like a plus c because the dimensions don't match up. So that gets a frowny face, and if you try to plug it into your calculator, you're going to get an error, and typically that error is a dimension mismatch. The second thing that we can do with matrices is we can multiply them by scalars. Now, scalars are things that aren't vectors or matrices. They're just basically numbers or functions. So we can take d, for example, and multiply it by 5, and it's pretty easy. You do exactly what you think you would do. You just multiply each element and vector d by 5. Multiplying a function like t squared by matrix B is also considered scalar multiplication. Leaving the scalar outside of the matrix is an option in this case. It's pretty clean that way. But if we want to multiply it into the matrix, again, all we do is multiply that scalar by every element inside of the matrix. Again, pretty easy. So easy that I'm actually going to erase what we've done so far and start up with matrix multiplication. We're going to start off talking about matrix multiplication by multiplying A times B. And matrix multiplication is not at all what you would expect. To get our 1, 1 element in A times B, we're going to take the first row of A and the first column of B, and we're going to do a dot product. Now I'll write it out the first time. A dot product in this case is 2 times 3 plus 4 times 6. I'll add that all up in a second. To get our 1, 2 element of our matrix A times B, we're going to take the first row again, except now we're going to do a dot product the second column of B. Okay, now we're looking for the 2, 1 element of our AB matrix. And to get that, we're going to do a dot product of the second row of A with the first column of B. And finally, to get our 2, 2 element of our AB matrix, we're going to do a dot product of the second column of A with the second column of B. And I think if you add all this stuff up here, you get this AB matrix right here. What's really interesting about matrix multiplication is it's not commutative. If we multiplied out B times A, you're not going to get the same thing that we just got when we multiplied out A times B. I won't make you watch me do it, but you should try it out just to be sure that you agree that matrix multiplication is not commutative. I'm going to erase this again and show you another example. Now, If we try to multiply out B times C, we'll go about this the same way that we did before. We'll try to take a dot product of the first row of matrix B the first column of matrix C, and you'll notice that this does not work. Again, the dimensions of these two matrices don't match up for matrix multiplication, but we can do C times B. More evidence that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Let's go through it pretty quickly, but it's the same process. We're going to take row 1 and column 1 of C and B respectively, and take a dot product, and you're going to get 3. For the next element, we're going to take row 1 and column 2, and that dot product is going to give us negative 5. Work our way down, C. We're going to start with row 2 of C and column 1 of B. And that dot, dot product should give us negative 12. Row 2 of C and column 2 of B. Dot product will give us negative 10. Row 3 of C and column 
1 of b is going to give us a dot product of 30. And I'm all out of color. The last row in c in the second column in b dot product it out, you're going to actually get 0. So I do want to make a quick note about matrix multiplication and the dimensions of your matrices. In this last example, we took a 3 by 2 matrix and multiplied it by a 2 by 2 matrix. And it worked, and it gave us a 3 by 2 matrix. The quick note I want to make is that the dimensions of your resulting matrix are always going to be the first dimension of your first matrix and the last dimension of your second matrix. That gave us 3 by 2. I also want to note that for this matrix multiplication to actually work, the inside two dimensions of your two matrices have to match up. That is why we couldn't do this matrix multiplication up here. We had a 2 by 2 times a 3 by 2, and our inner dimensions of those two matrices were not the same, so we couldn't do it. Now there is a lot to learn about matrices. In fact, there are entire classes in college devoted to matrices. Uh, those classes would be called either matrix algebra or linear algebra. And I encourage you to take those classes because this is pretty cool. But we're going to learn just enough in this class about matrices to be able to solve and kind of understand the solutions of differential equations. So something that I want to point out is uh, something that you can use matrices for to solve old algebra equations. Using our new knowledge of matrix multiplication, we can actually take a system, let's say just a simple 2 by 2 system, and we can rewrite it using matrices. There it is. I took these two equations here and I wrote them out in matrix form right here. Now I think clearly you can see the pattern, the way, but the reason this works is because of matrix multiplication. Remember, if we want to take this coefficient matrix here and multiply it by your variable vector, you would take the first row of that matrix and the column in this vector here, and you do a dot product. That would be 2 times x plus 3 times y. That's right there, and that of course is going to equal 1. The same is true of your second equation. If you took the second row of your coefficient matrix and multiplied it by your variable vector, you'd get 1 times x plus negative 3 times y equals 0. So basically you can take any linear system of equations like this, and you can rewrite it in the form some coefficient matrix times some variable vector equals some vector with all of your right-hand sides. Well, that's all well and good, but how do we solve for x? That would be our, mat our vector filled with our variables. We have to get that by itself. And people that have been in algebra for a while might say, well, you can just divide by a. Well, unfortunately, a is a matrix, and there's a rule that you can't actually divide by matrices. We technically don't do matrix division, but there is another option. You know from regular algebra that um, division is the same as multiplication by an inverse. So what we can do is we can actually take this equation and multiply it on both sides by an inverse of a. And when you take a inverse times a, they cancel each other out in a sense. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in class. You actually get something called an identity matrix. And the solution to this system of equations is just the inverse of your coefficient matrix times your vector that has the right-hand sides in it. Now keep in mind that this system of equations here was totally general. It could have been two equations, it could have been three equations and three unknowns. It could be a hundred equations and a hundred unknowns. So we've just simplified solving any number of equations with that same number of unknowns into one single problem. In order to solve that equation, all we need is all the coefficients in a matrix. We need to find the inverse of that matrix and multiply that by the vector made up of all of our right-hand sides of our equations. That'll give us a solution. Now, I think this video is probably getting a little bit long, so why don't we talk about that in class, along with a whole bunch of other things about matrices. This will give you a good start, though. So let me get you a quick video quiz here. Here are some matrices. I'd like you to find the following things. A times B, B times A, B times X, X times B, and 3A minus 5B. Okay, good luck, and I'll see you in class.